so here is a problem that everything's worked out, but I'm just going to talk you through. So the question reads, is there a linear correlation between the heights of candidates who won U.S. presidency elections and their runners-up? And so I've got this set of data. So the thing to realize is that's all that's given. Everything below that is stuff that we would need to be making. I've just done it to save you some time. So first thing I would need to do is identify my first set of data, X, the winners. So I'm going to take that list of data, and I'm going to list it in the X column that I've made. Next, identify my variable Y, which is the runners up, and I would make my Y column, copying these numbers vertically straight down. <clears throat> So all I've done is copy the information that I've been given. Now what I need to do, whoops, sorry, is count how many sets of data were given. So there was one, two, three, four, five pairings of data, right? So not individual numbers, but pairings of data. And so this tells me that n equals 5. Now I need to calculate everything else that's in the table, meaning I would add up my x's to get the 364 add up my Y column to get the 353.5. Normally I make the XY column next. I don't know why it somehow didn't on this case, but that means I'd be multiplying, you know, 69.5 and 72 to get the 5004. Multiply 73 and 69.5 to get 5073.5, etc. And then total that column for the 25,700 number. Next, I find my x squared number. Remember, this means that I would be squaring 69.5 to get 4,830.5. Squaring 73 to get 5,329, etc., etc., until I have a whole column that I can total to get the 26,000 number. And lastly, I need to make my y squared column. So 72 is my first y. Squaring it gives me 5,184. 69.5 squared. We actually already have the number of we're calculated, but doing it again. And once I've got all my y squareds, I total them. So now I'm ready to work on my formula. First, I need n which we said was 5. Then I'm going to multiply that with the sum of the xy column, so the 25,700 number. Subtract the sum of just x's, which is the 36,364 number, and multiply with the sum of y's, the 353.5 number. So now I've got the top of my fraction, and if you wanted to get out your calculator even now and type that all straight across, you should get negative 11.5. In the denominator, it starts off with n, which we said was 5. Now remember, this is where it gets tricky. I'm taking the x squared column total, which is the 26,500 number, but then I'm subtracting the sum of x column which is the 364 number, but most important, you've got to remember to square the 364. And again, you could type that right into your calculator to get 76.5. Go through this same process for the second square root in the denominator, which started off with n, which was 5, multiplied with y squared, total, and so the y squared total is to take the y squared column and just its total value of the 25,014 number and subtract the sum of y column, the 353.5, but then I need to square that number. And again, I could figure out the combined value of the bottom right square root, which is 109. Now I'm going to multiply 76.5 and 109, the two interior numbers of the square roots, to get 8,289.45. Now I can take my negative 11.5, 
divided by the square root of the 8,000 number, and I get the negative 1.2, et cetera, number. So the thing to remember from all of this is that R equals that negative 1.25 number. And then note, since R is closer to 0 than negative 1, there does not appear to be a linear correlation. And especially with a sample size of 5, you need numbers much closer to negative 1 and positive 1.